Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we are going to be connecting up Midjourney, the very popular AI art generation tool, to Bubble, the popular, popular no code tool. So, first thing, let's go ahead and take a look at the API that we'll be using in this, do some administrative stuff about how to get accounts and API keys and things of that nature. So, over here on goapi.ai, here in the URL box, just navigate here and we'll be using this AI, AI API to integrate with the AI Midjourney. So uh, in order to create an account, one thing that you will want to do is you'll actually head over to GitHub. Uh, they use GitHub just like someone has a website or an app where you log in with your Google account. They're set up to utilize a GitHub account to then log in. Once you've logged in, it will show you your API key, or if you uh, accidentally click out of that pop-up, you can navigate back down to my API keys and hit reset key. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and show that and do that. So you'll do something like this, and um, then you'll have an API key ready to go. Okay, so let's now, with that in hand, let's go and head over to the plugins tab. We have this brand new installation of uh, Bubble, and all I've done is added the API connector. So using this API connector uh, plugin, I will add the API here for Midjourney. Next, uh, add a shared header, add in your API key there, and then we're gonna take this x-api-key, all caps, and put that as the key there. Next, uh, underneath this API call, let's just go ahead, we'll label that imagine, action, and post, and we're gonna send it to this URL here, api.midjourneyapi.xyz, slash mj slash v2 slash imagine. Uh, this stuff can be found over in the uh, documentation of the Go API for the Midjourney uh, version two is what we'll be using. Okay, so we're halfway there to getting this set up. Um, we'll just add in this for the parameters, now there's a number of different ones here that you can take a look at over on the Imagine uh, section here. You may not need aspect ratio or care about that. Um, process mode, I'm gonna go with fast for this, uh, which I can set here, the AR, I'll go 16 by nine. Prompt and user ID, I'm gonna unselect those as private. These ones, you know, I guess maybe we would want to give someone the option of if they wanna fill these in, sure, why not? But for the prompt, I'll just say um, flying squirrel. And for the user ID, I'll just say user ID goes here. And then we'll initialize that call and we'll take note of this task ID. So I'll just drop that down here. We're gonna use that task ID here in this fetch command, which is taking the place of using a webhook. So they do offer a webhook. But in order to use webhooks in Bubble, uh, you need to be on a minimum of a paid plan so that you can uh, turn on the, uh, the API here. So to, you didn't need to upgrade to access that feature. So we won't be using that in this tutorial. However, um, you can see here in the Imagine call that actually it's over in the, it's not in this call, this webhook endpoint is something that you could add in. Here, uh, drop your URL here. and then utilize that uh, should you so desire. But okay, so for this fetch command, we are now going to add in this task ID, which will uncheck as private, that'll be important, and then I'll just initialize this call. And we'll notice because uh, it took about 54 seconds to uh, get this next call set up, the status is already finished. So we're gonna use that status, you know, in our uh, fetch, uh, our understanding of what's actually going on. But let's take a look at the data here 
and let's see what it returned to us for an image. Boom. Okay. So we're working, we're working with that uh, returned image now. And why not? Let's go and put together a quick UI where we'll just add an image up here. And we'll say something like that. And then let's see. Next up, we'll just drop an input and a and a button, and we'll allow these to uh, be used in just a moment. Okay, so we'll put a prompt into here. Type your prompt, and then we'll send it off. So if we take a look at this page, um, and we did something with the layout. Okay, and so we'll just make that fixed tight, and we'll add a for now, a border so that we can just take a look at what we're dealing with here. Cool. All right. So now let's just go and wire up our workflows so that we can start to use this. So imagine what we're going to do is we're going to take for the prompt, we're going to take that input as value. And then for the user ID, we're going to use the current user's unique ID. Why are we doing that? Well, great question. So over in the data here, under the user, I'm just gonna simply store the, the um, final image here. And then I'm also gonna store the task ID, which is that inter intermediary ID between the prompt and the, the final image. So with those set up, let's go and see how we want to do this. So in my testing, it's usually like anywhere from 16 to 25 seconds for the first image to show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put these into a custom event. And I'm going to say this is fetch try one. And then I'll add a parameter for the task ID. And that's type text. And then I'm going to, I'll add the fetch command here. And then I'll go ahead and, well, yeah. I'll add this as the dynamic value for this task ID. And then I'm going to copy and paste this. And we'll see why in a second. What is it that, uh, why do we need two of these? What are they for? Well, for fetch try one, what I'm going to do is I am going to schedule this custom event with the result of uh, step one, the task ID, and then I'm gonna give it a 15 second delay. And so 15 seconds, it's going to run this fetch and it's gonna see if something's there. So when it comes back, the I want to make changes to the current user for the final image, the result of step one's image URL. And I'll save that there. Uh, however, I'm only going to do that when the result of step one's status. Let's double check that we uh, we have this. So it is, yeah, this status variable. Whoa. Uh, when it is finished. Then we'll, we'll do that. However, if it is not finished, we want to schedule try number two with the task ID. And we're going to do that in five seconds. And then we'll do that whenever this, we'll just simply use it as is not finished. And that'll, that'll work. So then over here on try number two, what we'll want to do is if this results in that, we'll just change this to result step one, result of step one. 
And so you can see what's going on here is that this will now go back to try one with the result of step one is not finished. So it's going to bounce between these as kind of a, uh, you know, impromptu loop here until it makes changes to the user and then it will be done. When it makes that change to the user, we will see the image show up here. So the current user's final image. Cool. So let's go off and test this. What we're going to note over in the database is that let me go, let me go and actually create a user quick. So we'll just say, We'll just say run as, and then we'll type in our prompt and we'll say exploding star. And I didn't add anything. Cool. Well, I'm happy that this happened because you can see that we basically get uh, just a handful of times to try something out. So having created a uh, new API key on a new account, Let's just go with this again. So exploding star, send it. So now we'll see that happen. And we're gonna give it the 15 seconds so that it can wait and we're gonna turn this on slow so we'll actually see this pop up. Okay, so there it is, fetch number one, trying with that. When it's finished, no. When it's not finished, it's gonna wait five seconds and then it's going to try number two. Nope. And then in five seconds, it'll go back to try number one. Try number two, still not finished. But I imagine it's probably pretty darn close now. Yep, cool, so there it is. So it is finished and we see the image get populated here. So it was successfully, uh, saved to the current user as the result of step one's uh, result image URL, which we can see in the database for this nice big image. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you are interested in more mid journey um, API calls and basically getting a full setup, check out the description. Um, if it's not there, it will be there shortly for the for where you can buy a course on all of the different various API calls um, from rerolls to upscales to uh, the zoom the new zoom out feature where it would take the image that you have and create additional uh, background for it and even a face swap. So check that out if you're interested in more API setup for mid journey.